So today I'm not going to preach. I want to teach you about Passover. You saw that you can know and benefit out of it. Because many Christians are losing out in this season. Many Christians are losing out in this season. Amen. Many are losing out. There are a lot of spiritual benefits. There are a lot of things that you can declare and decree in the spiritual realm and receive them this season. But because of the deception that is upon the world, the whole earth, everybody's deceived. And believe you me, many are missing the breakthroughs that we're supposed to receive as children of God. It is not just a holiday. It is not just a holiday season. Let us go to Jeremiah 50, verse 25. I will start there. Father, I thank you this morning. I give you the glory. Lord, we love you so, so much. Father, where, where else can we find a God like you? Who's so loving, who's so gracious, who's so merciful, almighty, all-knowing, all-wise God, who's above all powers and principalities. Father, we know not of any other God except for you. We just want to say this morning, thank you for loving us first, before we can even know how to love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. We love you so much. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Let me not speak my mind. Let me not speak my ideas. Let me speak with the old tongue of the learned, the word in season to those who are weary. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Uh -uh. Jeremiah 50, verse 25. I can see you have released uh, your own scripture, Mr. Dagada. Uh, I want you, we're going to start this, this, this scripture. Passover, the build up towards Passover is the time that God released his armory. Other versions said his weaponry. Other versions say with the God that released all his arsenal and indignation against Egypt. Where did he start? What is the origin of Passover? Before we can go to Good Friday and times and the build up before Jesus Christ was crucified, that one I'll teach you on Friday. Today I want us to focus on the precursor of Passover. Uh, I think uh, we're going to have a bookshop. We're going to start selling notebooks. You can't come to church and not take notes. Unless otherwise you are saying that you will go to, to the social media and listen. Hey. Yeah, I can hear you already saying get like get like a more YouTube channel. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, you got me there. You got me there. Let us go to Genesis 12. I, want, I, I just want us to, to trace the, the work of Passover, how it started, and what you benefit as a child of God. And once you know that, you won't want to be anywhere else on that day except in the church. There are two things that are under attack currently. The first one is church attendance. Because Satan understands the benefits of children of God being in the church more than the children of God themselves. He, know, he knows what you get when you are here. 
I'm going to tell you a story before, before you go. Let us go to Genesis 12. Genesis chapter 12. I want you to see, just trace back where did this Passover started and how. God help me not to preach. Let me share what you have deposited in my spirit, man. So that people can have revelation knowledge of your seasons. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house. We are not live on Facebook. From your family and father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. Check this one. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That is where Passover started. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham was identified by God that in his lineage, the last Adam shall be born. Who is the last Adam? Jesus Christ. Amen. When God identified Abraham, Abraham was, was in the city of Ur. It was a modern day city at that time. He was comfortable. He had all the things that he needed. But God knew that there is one thing missing. Genesis 126. Man is not yet according to the image of God. Amen. After man fell from the grace, man had to be restored back to the image of God. Yes, prophets came after that, but the very aim of the identification of Abraham was to restore back humanity to their rightful place in God. Hallelujah. And then the God started the process. We're not going to go to all the verses. If you go read, if you go read Genesis 15, God enters into a covenant with, with Abraham. He tells Abraham that you're going to be a great nation. You, there will be people who will be born from you. And these people will go to a land that will torment them for 400 years. Referring to Egypt. And then it happened when there was great, great uh, drought that the Joseph, in fact, Joseph was sold by his brothers. It was, it was part of the process. It was part of the plan of the redemption of men. When Joseph went to Egypt, it was part of the process. Joseph found favor. I'm not going to go through the story of Joseph in the pit, in prison and all that, him being a prime minister. Joseph found favor. He became the manager of the wealth of Egypt. Abraham's children followed through the lineage of Jacob. The 12 tribe went there. When they went there, there were 79 families. There were 79 people. They were given the land of Goshen to stay in Egypt. Goshen was one of the most fertile places in Egypt. Amen. So in Goshen, the children of Israel forgot about their father's promise. Remember, God promised Abraham that I will give you a land that flows with what? Milk and honey. Which is the land of what? Canaan. So in, in when the children of Israel were in Goshen, they became so comfortable. They begin to plant. They begin to trade. They became become so powerful. They gave birth and multiplied. But the Pharaoh who gave them the land died. Generations later, a pharaoh that was placed in power did not know of what the, the covenant between Joseph and the then pharaoh or their forefathers. 
So he was threatened by the children of Israel. But still, when, when he was threatened, the mandate of God has never changed. God was still after the last Adam, who is Jesus Christ. That man has to be born. And the people who were identified are what? The, the chosen people, the people of Israel. Are we together? I'm just giving you the background. I want you to understand. We'll, we'll, we'll go deeper. We'll go deeper. No, so, so, the Pharaoh, the, I call him the cruel Pharaoh, began to see the children of Israel as a threat. He gave a command that all male boys, all male children that are to be born by the children of Israel should be killed. Should be killed. Meaning, he was destroying, he wanted to destroy what? The seed. Remember Genesis 3, uh, the last part, uh, God said, the seed of the woman will destroy what? Will bruise the head of the serpent. So Satan did not know which seed would bruise his head. So he started targeting all the seed. But the midwives who were given an instruction to kill the sons did not do so. The children of Israel continued to grow. And the, the Pharaoh decided that, you know what, now let us enslave them. They became slaves. They forgot even how to worship God. They were not given time to worship. They were given taskmasters who gave them the hardest task. For, hand, for 400 years, they were under slavery. Now, God heard the groaning of the children of Israel. He remembered the covenant that he had with Abraham. And also he remembered that there is someone, there is something called the last Adam. There is someone called the last Adam who is on the loins of the, of the children of Israel who are being enslaved. Jesus was there on the loins. And what happens? Exodus 12 starts. Can you go to it now? Can you go to Exodus 12? I gave you a proper background. Remember, underline this in your mind. In you, all the nations shall be what? Be blessed. Amen? That's the, that's the word that was given to who? To Abraham. That in him, all the nations shall be what? Blessed. All families on the earth shall be what? Blessed. Let us go to Exodus 12. Exodus 12. And now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of you saying, No, uh, I'm starting somewhere in the middle. Okay, here I have to again narrate to you what happened. Because if you read, for the sake of time, please write down Exodus 12. You'll, you'll read it when, when you get home. So now, Moses is taken out of Egypt. He's running away because he murdered an Egyptian. For 40 years, he spent 40 years in the desert being a shepherd. That 40 years, God was taking Egypt out of Moses. Are we together? For 40 years, what was God doing? Taking Egypt out of who? Moses. Because Moses was cooled in Egypt. He was learned in all the wisdom of Egyptians. How? Because he was adopted as the daughter of Pharaoh when he was found in the river. So for 40 years, Moses has to be drained out the Egyptian in him until God realized that no, Moses is a king. He appeared, he appeared for Moses in the burning bush and he spoke to Moses, go and take my children out. So Moses approached Pharaoh, and the, you know the story. But I want, you, I want us to look at the key factors. Why is it that Satan is so threatened by this season? Why? What, what has happened? In every, you know, remember, I'm going to say this. Christmas, everything was opened. Nobody was worried about covid People traveled, everything was happening, the church were opened. So now all of a sudden, people are worried about one day. 
Friday. Okay, let's say two days or three days. But the Christmas season was more than 15 days, if you can, if you can look at it. Because many people take their leaves when? 15 December up to the 6th of January. So why was in that Christmas season any, any, a, a threat to the kingdom of darkness? Whereas the, I'm not saying, I'm not belittling the death, the birth of Jesus Christ. I, wa, I want us to look at the significance of the season. Amen? I want us to look at what? At the significance of the season. As to why people are threatened. Why the kingdom of darkness threatened by this season. If you understand this, I want to put it to you. From tonight onwards, you'll take Holy Communion daily. Like, like, me and my family have been taking Holy Communion since last year, January, to last night. We haven't stopped. Because we have a revelation of the blood. So, you, you're going you, you're gonna to get this. Believe you me, you're not going to leave this house empty-handed today. Amen? Can I, can I first declare something before, you, you, before I, I continue? Whatsoever that Satan has stolen from you because of the ignorance of this season, you will have it sevenfold today. You're going to live with it today. You're going to walk into the newness of revelation and that, and that revelation will give you the newness of breakthroughs. Hallelujah. So, Moses began to deal with Pharaoh. That's why, that's, that's, that's why we started with, with, with Jeremiah 50 verse 25. When God is releasing what? All his arsenal. All his weaponry. I want to put it to you that every plague, if you didn't know, every plague that hit Egypt was destroying a particular god in Egypt. The main gods that were worshipped, the first god that was worshipped, Egyptians worshipped the river Nile because it was regarded as the source of life. That's the reason why the first plague was to turn the river into what? Blood. Satan did not see anything coming. God is saying, I'm about to hit you hard with the blood. No, you're not getting it. God is saying to Satan, everything that is alive because of the demonic sacrifices will be killed by the blood. Every marine spirit in the river Nile that you, the Egyptians, are, you, are worshipping this season will be dealt with with the blood. Oh. Am I talking to someone this morning? Hallelujah. So, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to touch all the plagues. So, all the plagues. So, God dealt with that. And one of the main gods was the god of the, one of the main gods that Egyptian worship was the sun. Under the god Numre or Re, the Egyptian sun god. God hit him with three days of darkness. Why? God was saying he is the light. Hallelujah. He is saying what? I am the way and the light. There is no any other God who is the light except for me. I decide when it's going to be dark. I decide when it's going to be light. Hallelujah. So, so this is the season where, where you talk to every dark area in your life. That if you are darkness, you are there. I'm going to bring darkness that is holding to destroy you darkness. And when the real light comes, the real darkness will be gone. Am I talking to someone this morning? Hallelujah. So that's the reason why Satan hates this. He knew that there is darkness that can overshadow his darkness. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to precious now. He knows that there is darkness that can overshadow his darkness. They call him the kingdom of darkness. But God said, you know what, for three days... I will be darkness. To prove a point to your God of the sun, that there's only one God. That's the reason why Satan hates this day. Because he, he, Egypt had the most sophisticated form of worship of the kingdom of darkness. Their form of worship included all the elements of the earth. From the water 
to the plants, to the animals and everything. So the ten plagues has to show Satan that what you have established in Egypt, the sophisticated form of the, of the demonic worship that you have established in Egypt is nothing compared to the soon coming king. Am I talking to someone? That's the reason why Satan hates Passover. Because he used Egypt to set up his sophisticated kingdom of darkness. In the water, they were there. In the, in the sun, they were there. In the plants, they were there. In the soil, they were there. That's the reason why there is one of the plagues when the soil dust was turned into what? Into what? Dust was turned into what? Okay, you're going to go read your Bible. I'm not going to tell you. Even the dust itself was dealt with. So, this is where God releases his weaponry. He releases his arsenal. Destroying the sophisticated kingdom of darkness that has kept the children of Israel under bondage. And one last one. Before you, can, before you can go deeper, because now I'm just trying to tell you this. this one, one thing that has happened, the death of the firstborns. Every firstborn was dedicated to the Egyptian god of the sun. So when they died, all the firstborn of the animals were all dedicated. When the death or when the firstborn died to Egypt, it was a blow because even there are things that were dedicated to first their God was dealt with and now even the sons are dealt with they are all the firstborn are dead that's the reason why Pharaoh said Pharaoh did not say go because the, it was not about the children who died it was about the spiritual the spiritual representation of the death of the meaning of the death of the firstborn because, look, look, look at this. The firstborn can die, and still, the secondborn will be what? The first. And they, they will continue to have what? Slaves saving them. So when they realize that they've been hit left, right, and center, their sophisticated system of demonic worship is being dismantled one by one. Egyptians said to Moses, go with everything that you have. But that was not all. That, that was not all. God, because of that, God did something. Before they can die, God says to elders of Israel, he said, Moses, Command the, the elders of Israel, let every man and his family take a lamb. Keep it for some time. You're going to go read it. It's there in Exodus 12. And slaughter it on a particular day. There is something that it is not there in the Bible, but it's there. The obedience of the fathers of Israel is the one that rescued the Israelites from Egyptians. Had they not listened to Moses and do exactly as what Moses told them, I want to put it to you, they slaughtered the lamb. The blood was in the basin. But the blood in the basin was not enough to rescue them. The children, the fathers of Israel has to take hyssop. Something that looked like it was worthless. Hyssop is weed. That is sponge like his. Took hyssop and sprinkled the blood on the doorpost. Why am I talking about the elders of the Israel? One thing that was being restored in the Passover was their obedience of the male seed. Am I talking to someone? It was the obedience of what? Of the male seed. The elders of Israel. 
that Moses spoke to were the males. In the olden days, there were no elders who were women. When God says, go and speak to the elders of Israel and said to the men, let each and every, every man in this house take a lamb and destroy it. He was saying what? There was a disobedience in the garden of a male seed. Now pass over, I'm going to restore the obedience of the male seed. Through what? Through the blood of the lamb. Am I talking to someone? So, so pass over has a complete restoration of mankind. Because when the male seed is restored, the family structure is restored. That's the reason why God said, each family must go and eat the lamb. If they can't finish, they must share with other families. So again, the heavenly structure was restored. That is why Passover, it is not just about the death of... It's, there is more in it. Satan hates it because he knew what I'm sharing with you today. Had the elders of Israel disobeyed Moses, Israelites were gone, will still be in Egypt today. And Messiah won't be crucified in Golgotha. You didn't hear me. Had the male seed of Israel disobeyed Moses, on the first instruction, Israel will still be in Egypt today. So the release of the church in Passover is dependent upon the obedience of the male seed. The male seed saved their women and children by taking the blood and apply it on the Moses said everybody should be inside the house when the angel of death passes the families were saved and guess what and because of the obedience of the male seed when the Israelites left Egypt because what God intended to do happened they plundered the Egyptians wealth was released the 400 years that the Israelites worked for nothing was, 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 was reimbursed. Am I talking to someone? Are you taking notes? Number one, listen. I'm going to talk to men. If men in this country, in this church, if men in this country and in the church in the body of Christ don't go back in, to the obedience of the word of God, there will be no release of the church from the stronghold of Satan. If I turn to someone, and when the church is not released, men and their families will suffer. Supernatural wealth transference that came when the Israelites left Egypt was because there was a man in each family who slaughtered a lamb. Oh, you, 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 are, you are not understanding this. There was a man who pleaded the blood in each and every family. There was a man who applied the blood in each and every family on the doorpost. And guess what? Men could not do that alone. Because the Bible says, let the lamb be roasted by the fire. Do you know what's making the fire? <laughs> do you know what's making the fire? Do you know who distributed the meat? God restored the heavenly order of family in Passover. And the families that were restored became instantly millionaires. 
Something that most of you don't know that in this season, it is the season of going back to the word of God. It is the season of obeying. Can I tell you something? The, the disobedience in the, of the word of God is like the blood in the basin. Even if you have slaughtered the lamb, if the blood remains in the basin and is not applied on the doorpost, that blood remains what? Powerless. You knowing what to do and not do it. Two different things. The blood in the basin is powerless until it's applied. We overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of what? Of our testimonies. What is the word of our testimony? When we take the word of God and apply it in conjunction with the blood, we become victorious because we are obedient children of God. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. I love the blood. I love Passover. Secondly, <laughs> a new season was declared. God said to Moses, from this day onwards, this day that I've destroyed the, the firstborn of Egypt, this will be your first month. In other words, he's saying, I'm, re I'm re removing you from the Egyptian calendar. I'm putting you into my own calendar. In other ways, you are trying to get heavenly victories using worldly stuff. From this day onwards, this month shall be your first month. In other ways, my season is changing. Hallelujah. Say I'm in a new season. Say my life won't be governed by any demonic season. Say from today onwards, I'm working in the season of God. Because that's what God instructed. He said to Moses, from today onwards, this month shall be the first month in your calendar. Listen to this. Obedience brings forth new seasons in your life. No, you, you, you didn't hear me. Obedience brings what? Bring forth what? New seasons in your life. You, you, the moment you disobey God, you are working with the Egyptian calendar. Do you know what, do, do you know what the Egyptian calendar? is? slavery, toiling, you work with nothing to show for. You are waking and suffering at the same time. You were suffering before you get employed. <laughs> now you are waking. You are suffering death. You are, you are in a worse position than where you were before you get employed. Before you get employed, you owe, no, you owe nobody nothing. Now that you are employed, you owe, you owe banks, people, machonists, all those things because of the Egyptian season. How can the redeemed of the Lord who have the Passover blood of the Lamb, how can the toiling not pass over them? How can the suffering not pass over them? Season. Seasons. Say neighbor. Seasons. Satan hate, the, hate this season. Why? Because it, it brings forth new ways of life for you. It brings forth what? New ways of life for you. Before, before I proceed, because I'm about to enter into another one, let us recap a little bit. Moses 
give a commandment to the elders of Israel, of Israel, take a lamb, slaughter it, take the blood, put the blood in the basins, take the hyssop, apply the blood. The blood was applied on top, on the side, and on the side, and the basin was on the bottom. What does it represent? The cross with the blood of Jesus Christ falling away on the floor. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it to you. Don't say I didn't. Attempt will be made to cancel Passover season because it's causing too much damage in the spiritual realm for the kingdom of darkness. Just to take you back a little bit before I continue, the great contest time is the one who came with the word with the name Easter. Trying to confuse the real meaning of Passover. Because he realized that every time when the children of God celebrate Passover, they were becoming more and more powerful, resourceful, and wiser, and more rich. He said, the only thing that is making the children of God more powerful is their observance of God in ordinances. Because they understand them. I love, I love your quietness. And God said to them, this is a day you are to commemorate. Okay, can you go to Exodus 12, 14? Exodus, 14, Exodus 12, verse 14, I mean. Exodus 12, verse 14. I want to finish as fast as possible. Exodus 12, verse 14. So this is the day. So this day shall be to you a memorial. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days shall eat and live in bread. Okay, this one we shall, we shall go to eat. I want, to, I want us to focus on the word ordinance. What is an ordinance? Ordinance is an instruction by the higher power. I don't know what is happening. Is, I'm showing the connection. Ordinance is instruction by the higher power to make you obey or observe certain times and seasons. When God says this day shall be an ordinance, it means that there are benefits that he has placed for, for this season. And what are the benefits? Can you go to Exodus 20? Exodus 20? Exodus 23, I mean. Exodus 23. So God speaks to Moses in Exodus 23. He begins to outline the benefits of Passover. Nine benefits of Passover. What are the nine benefits of Passover? Exodus 23, verse 20. Go there. Exodus 23, verse 20. Divine protection. I'm going to put it to you. I want, I want to take you to last year. What was the first casualty of COVID last year? Passover. What was taken away from the children of God? Divine protection. Let us go to Exodus 20, verse 20, 23, verse 20, I mean. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and bring you into the place which I have prepared. To keep you, Psalm 91. They shall keep you. Angel of the Lord shall do what? Pro keep you. Lest you dash your feet against what? The stone. The first thing, that's why I say, the COVID, the, the COVID setup was a well orchestrated plan by the kingdom of darkness. It is not a, it is not a 
a fluke that it came before a uh, Passover. No. Amen. The 26th of March, last year, a lockdown was instituted. A meeting was held with all religious institutions that don't go to church. And by then, the infection rate was still less than 5%, as it is today. Even the current infection rate is still less than 5% to qualify to be for, for a lockdown. And you'll see they're going to do what? Institute another what? Lockdown. So the nine divine benefits of Passover. Write this one, divine protection. Exodus 23 verse 20. Two, protection from the enemies through positioning and alignment. When God wants to protect you, that's Exodus 23 verse 22. He said, but if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, an adversary to your adversaries. God wants to declare himself an enemy to COVID. Hey, hey, hallelujah. COVID is an enemy to mankind from today onwards as we invoke the blessings of Passover, COVID is, has become officially an enemy to God. So therefore, God will fight it. That which we couldn't do last year, we are declaring it today. Am I talking to someone? Three, divine commission of divine authority. Exodus 23 verse 24. These things, God is sharing this with Moses while they are on their way out of Egypt. Without these nine blessings, the, nine, the river Nile would, 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 would without this, they, would, they wouldn't have, have seen victories all over. All these nine blessings are the ones that gave them the victories the water, the manna, everything, because all the, all the enemies that they fought along the way is because of the nine blessings of Passover that are not observed or known by many. Hallelujah. I can see your faces are saying, Pastor, we are surprised. Don't worry. I was like you when I, when I got this revelation. I was surprised too. So welcome to the surprise band. You shall not bow down to their God, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and completely break down their sacred pillars. Who is trying to be God over the church? COVID. The spirit of COVID wants the church to bow to it. It says when we go to school, when we go to work, when we go to, all, to do all this, is. it's trying to be the Lord of our lives. And God says, no, we shall not bow. As it is right now, there are those who have given up. They've given up on the church. They've bowed to the God called COVID. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. Number four. Number four. I love this one. This one is one of my favorites. Read, read Exodus 20, 23, verse 25. Let us all read it together because we, we, need, to all, we need to all partake in this. I'll, 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 I want you to see the link on the current situation in this one. What, 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 what does it say? Let us all read on the board. What does, what does it say? You'll take what? Okay, let me let you. Blessing your bread is prosperity. Taking sickness away is protecting you against what? The plague. Check two, the two main things that happened because of COVID. People were sick and they lost their jobs. Lives and livelihood were affected. People's finances were affected. So as we receive these blessings, declare Exodus 23 verse 25 to yourself. 
that God will bless my bread. What is bread? It's investment. It's your finances. It's your supernatural wealth. And, and, and thy water. And it will take sicknesses away. Other, other, other translations say it will take all the plagues away from you. Exactly what the enemy didn't want us to declare last year. We were all under what? Under fear. There was so much fear that was released, even through the media, that everybody else, people even did panic buying, except for your pastor. We said, my, my wife said to me, the shops are not going to close. We're, gonna still, we're still going to go get these things. We went and buy a few t-shirts, but we did not buy 100 tissues. I don't know why people were buying a 1,000 toilet papers. Because I've never seen anybody cooking toilet papers. Are, uh, how do you buy more toilet paper than food? Because toilet paper is used after you have eaten. <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> Just asking. Supernatural health and kingdom prosperity. That is number five. If you can check livelihood and lives were affected. And it's one of the blessings of this season. If you don't know them, you won't claim them. Hallelujah. N number five, covenant protection for multiplication and longevity. It's Exodus 23 verse 26. It said, no one shall suffer miscarriage or barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. We are supposed to be productive in our workplaces. What happened? Factories were shut down. Product productivity was taken away. Artists could not go and have gigs anywhere. Productivity was shut down. And the lifespan of people was reduced. And God is saying, in this Passover, what, 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 what do you receive? No one shall suffer miscarriage or barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Long life. When you pray, let me stop here. I'll continue now. I want you to go and med go to Exodus 23. From verse 20 to 33. Meditate upon it. Make these declarations upon yourself and upon your families. Say, this season going forward, this is what I'm, I'm partaking on in the Passover. You mention them one by one. And the scriptures, you pray them. Hallelujah. Number six. Exodus 23, verse 27. I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come and make all your enemies turn your backs on you. You are supposed to work in perpetual victory. Some of you, when you go to your workplaces, you are fearful. There are people that you know that they can, just by one way you lose your job. They have become God over your, play, over your lives. One, there are people that you know that by one word you lose favor. And God is saying, he will send fear to your enemies. When they think of your name, when they think of Temba Tusi or Pumulani Dudu, fear will come upon them. They will say, okay, uh, let us touch everybody, everybody else, but not that one. That one, that one. Why? I don't know, but... Eh, Something is not going to be right. Just by mention of your name, people will be afraid of you. The benefits of Passover. Hallelujah. We are still going to go to the benefits of the blood of Jesus on Friday. This one I'm just talking about the benefits of the season. Hallelujah. Are you excited? You don't look excited. You look concerned. <laughs> You look concerned. Oh, okay, relieved that, oh, no wonder why. COVID, the first thing that was attacked by COVID was passed over. Yes. As I said to, to you on Thursday, I'm going to say to you again, the enemy has more revelation 
about what's happening in the spiritual realm than most of you. And it's time for the church to take back its original position through obedience. Hallelujah. Number seven, relief from the threat of your enemies. Exodus 23 verse 28. It is almost the same as, as, as six. He say, I will send hornets before you. I will drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from you. There are people who are sitting on your positions. There are people who are taking your market. Declare that it's my time to take over and occupy. I, I, God, I thank you that I'm not preaching. Today I'm talking. Hallelujah. Some of you are supposed to be managers a long time ago. You were supposed to be millionaires a long time ago. Your markets are lost to your adversaries. Even though you believe that somebody is bewitching you, no, we are not being bewitched. We are just failing to partake on what's ours. When you don't eat your food and you become hungry, am I, am I lying? So if you, if you don't partake, on the spiritual food that God has ordained for us. You are not being bewitched. My people perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 verse what? 6. It's lack of what? Knowledge. I, 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 I love that you are serious. Eight. Go to Exodus 23 verse 30. Can I see it on the screen? This is important. Little by little, I will drive them out from before thee. There are some of you who don't know how to wait on God. You want God to do things today. You want a million today. Let me tell you one thing. God will give you a million, but little by little, until you reach a state of maturity where you can handle the million. Because if it releases a million, it might kill you. Am I talking to someone? It might do what? So Satan has attacked a lot with the spirit of discouragement because they believe that God is not answering their prayers. And God is saying, I will do it little by little. Little by little is also an anointing from God. It's not a curse from Satan. So, you determine the speed of your inheritance through your spiritual growth. I've got a son. I love him so much. But I'll never buy him a C63. When he's 18, never. He's not mature enough to handle that power. It will kill him. So, God is, if we who are evil know how to give better things to our sons, how about God? So, little by little, it is not a denial from God. God is not delaying. He's saying, when the season is right, I will move you to the next level of glory. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. When the season is what? It's right. So, most of us, no, yeah, you know, I, I think I need anointing water. I think I need anointing oil. I've got it. God gave me a particular instruction. I went to buy it. I was ignoring him. I parked here. He said, get out. I said, go buy anointing oil. You're going to do this with it. And I use it already. And I'm still going to use it. But this is not breakthrough. Your breakthrough in life is in obe obeying the word of God. It is not in this. This is just a token that it, this, this is just something that a symbol that God tells us to use when it deems fit. Not full time. Anybody who instructs you to use anointing oil full time, go and give it to him and instruct him to fry eggs with it full time. You are instructed to obey the word of God and declare the word of God full time. 
That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are you saying? You are uttering the word of God daily. That is your responsibility. The word of God. Not water, not anything else. So little by little, it is not a denial of prayer. It's not that God is not answering you. He's saying, little by little, I'll drive your enemies and you will be increased and inherit. Meaning, as you grow spiritually, you reach a place of maturity where you can now receive your inheritance. And when you've received it, you know how to use it fruitfully. Some of you are millionaires here. Multi-millionaires, but you are delaying yourself by obedience. He who is unfaithful with little cannot be trusted with much. The last one. Freedom from corrupt covenants. 23 verse, 23 verse 33. Let, let us read it. Say, they shall not dwell in your land lest they make you sin and get for and save their gods. It will be a snare to you. Most of us are saving our own gods. And one of that God is the God called self. In the last days, many shall be lovers of themselves. We are saving, we are saving the God called wealth. The God called material. The God called I look good, I feel good. God is saying, I'm a jealous God. You better look good. It's good. Look good. Look good. Look up to date. But that look, that look must start from the inside out. Hallelujah. You cannot be a beautiful tombstone with a rotting body inside. Is decorated with all the silver and gold. Everybody admired the tombstone. But nobody wants to see the worms that are inside. Hallelujah. So this is the truth that Satan does not want you to know about this season. And about the blood of Jesus we'll share on Friday. Having said that, we are fasting. And I'm not going to tell you which type of fast. You are going to choose your own fast. And your own times. And declare Exodus 23. You go through Exodus 23. All of it. Write it down. Exodus 12, you're going to read it. Exodus 13, you're going to read it. And then we'll jump to Exodus 23, 20 up to 33. You'll be fasting. I'm not going to tell you the type of a fast. I'm not going to tell you the times of the fast. I want you to be responsible for your own future. Because what? So even if you can tell you are not eating, some of you get tempted and eat. And, and then you stop fasting altogether. You said, ah, I, I'm, I'm stopping to fast. I've eaten already. What? This next... So we're fasting Monday to Wednesday. A fasting of your own choice. Choose your own prayer times. We'll meet on Thursday. That's how you treat matured people in the Lord. I'm not going to tell you which fast. You are praying against the so-called third wave. We are declaring the Passover blood upon our families and decreeing these benefits up upon ourselves and our families. These nine benefits. And I want to put it to you that these are the hidden truths that the enemy didn't want you to know. The enemy wants you to know about the Ten Commandments. Why? Because there is condemnation there. He's happy when you're condemned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall stop here. I'm sure that now you understand Passover and the benefits. But 
I've skipped the blood. We're going to go back to the blood on Friday. We're going go, to go drill deeper into the blood. The people who come to this church are known for one language. What do they speak? The blood. The blood of Jesus. Wherever they are. No, no person, no, no son or daughter of the house in this place who prays and not mention the blood of Jesus. I know them. There was somebody who said to me, one of the people who was praying here, I work with that person. We used to fellowship together at work. They said to me, that person prays exactly like you. They pray exactly like you. The blood, everything. I said, we, we haven't changed. We still believe in the blood. But I want to recap to you that the elders and the fathers of the house, they were obedient enough for the release of Israel. And the mothers, they distributed the lamb to the family. As a mother, what are you distributing to your family? As a father, what seed are you? Are you a seed of obedience or disobedience? So this, this Passover restores you because the moment you go back to where God wants you to be, let us look at the scripture. The Bible said they plundered the Egyptians. There are certain things we don't pray for. There is nowhere in the Bible where the Israelites prayed for silver and gold before they leave Egypt. They did not pray for that. They only obeyed their servant, their Moses. There are certain things you don't pray for. You obey your Moses. And so that is the package of the Passover message. Did I teach the whole of it? No. There is no time. I'm believing God that this season of Passover, April, I might just give you the snippet. You will walk differently. You will see yourself differently. You will be a different person. And I want to put it to you that you will walk in power and authority. Hallelujah. May you stand up. May you please stand up. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to talk to your God about what you have learned today. I'm not going to tell you what to pray. Continue praying. Close your eyes and pray. Close your eyes. Pray. Close your eyes and pray. <laughs>